how wealth-minded people deal with their credit. So I'm gonna guide you through how wealthy people use credit. And it's very different than most of you think. And I guarantee it's different than any of you that think you're gonna be debt-free think. And most of you that are debt-free, hmm, may or may not have great credit. So I have a lot to talk about. Stay to the end of the video and I'm gonna give you some ideas on how to expand your knowledge base and understanding around how do you get more credit and money and sources of funding than you've ever needed possible. You're just starting from the wrong spot. So the three things I wanna talk about are the strategies to maximize your credit score and not just your personal credit, your corporate credit. And you say, well, I don't have any corporate credit. You're gonna get some. This is all embedded. You're going to get the stuff I'm talking about. Number two, how do you leverage credit to actually increase your wealth? So I'm gonna talk about arbitrage. I'm gonna talk about debt and how do you actually use that to support the goals that you really want? And number three, the common credit mistakes to avoid at all costs. So what are the strategies to maximize your credit score? So first of all, it's about you, you and your social security number. Well, I believe at 18 years old, you actually get your first credit card and you don't go for one, you go for at least four. And then over the course of that next year, you increase it to six or seven cards. Yes, that is the maximum benefit, but you're gonna be rotating them at all times and using them. So I'm gonna come to that in a little moment. You wanna make sure your utilization of each card is around 30%. And again, to mix them up a little. So what I mean by getting four to six cards and why that's so beneficial is is if there's four weeks in a month, so you're gonna pay off the one. Ideally, you keep it 0% interest by paying them off every month. And just identify, like, especially with teenagers, like 18 to 22, 24 year olds, we did the same thing with my son, and we'll do it with my daughter. Like maybe the Discover card was for gas, maybe the Everyday Amex was for food and snacks and things like that. Maybe the other one was for, you know, apartment or home supplies. So you kind of identify what you're gonna use the cards for, especially if it's personal. It helps you, on, you know, really start breaking down what you spend in each each area, that's usually shocking, but you wanna use them pay them off, use them, pay them off. So if you had four cards, for example, week one, you'd pay off in total this card. Then you start using it again. And then week two, you'd pay off this one, start using it again. So if you notice, you always have debt and you always owe inside the financial systems. What they're looking for for your credit is do you make money? Are you contributing? In, are you making income? And are you spending? So the more you make, spend, and keep your utilization and those interest rates down on your cards, they become what I call credit card investment cards. And you wanna get the cards that have maximum points. Obviously, that's just a little bit different. In fact, I won't go into all that because I really want to keep this about your credit score. But at any point, go up to my search bar and actually you could binge watch for hours on what I talk about when I talk about debt and credit cards. So go look at those and just research how I use cards and how you, you can use them to really become investment cards. It's almost like you're printing your own money over time. When it comes to corporate credit score, you just have to begin, which means you need to get incorporated. I have a huge team. So when you call our office and get a strategy session, which go and click on the link below to get a strategy session. We'll talk about where you are, what you want, and how do we help you get there. And then our corporate team, structure team, will talk about it in America, an LLC, an S Corp, a C Corp, limited partnership or trust. So as you talk through those and identify which ones are best for you, just say you get two LLCs. You have an operating company, maybe you do coaching or direct sales or whatever you do, and you have some rental real estate. So you have two maybe LLCs. And then depending on how much money you make, you might have, say, a third company, right, as a management marketing company, an S Corp or C Corp. So let's just say you have three. So you actually start with Dun & Bradstreet. Believe it or not, you do start there. That's the easiest way to start to build corporate credit. You also get independent credit cards on the name of the company. So sometimes you have to go more to the trades. Like if you have a real estate rental property, get a Home Depot card and try to get a pro account, get a Lowe's card, get those kind of cards to help build up some corporate credit. And then you go straight, in my opinion, for the American Express card. So as you use those cards, can you imagine, right? So we move into number two, right? How do you really leverage to increase wealth? You're not just using your social security number. Number, right now you have three other right lines of credit and corporate cards. So now you have four credit scores, yours and three companies. You have the associated credit cards that go with it and then the utilization of all of that. So the more you make and spend on each of those cards, you're showing the financial services world that you are actually playing. I always say if you can't you know, be responsible for the little that you make or spend, how are you gonna actually have hundreds of thousands, if not millions to be responsible for? Right? If you can't be responsible for a small amount, why well, would God grant you a whole bunch? <laughs> you're just, you're, you're too, irresponsible about it. Once you have all those credits and you really want to manage it, you want to like really boost your corporate credit score. I mean, I have companies myself, as other people have companies that have unlimited lines. I mean, talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars of lines of credit you can pull against. So when you're out there saying, well, nobody will give me money. Well, they probably shouldn't because you haven't been responsible with the small amount you have, much 
less, you know, have these lines of credit to spend irresponsibly. So managing your credit score, I mean, I think it's right up there with any other, you know, viable point of being in the financial space. Because having good credit gives you lines of credit. Banks take you seriously. They want to give you money and they'll give you cheaper money. So a lot of you, the reason why you have high interest rates is because you haven't managed the small amounts properly. So also just noticing there's good debt and there's bad debt. So like there's funding sources that we have where they have up to 500 different you know banks and lines of credit and just sources. So we can get you all hooked up as a client. We don't just do that casually when you call into our office, you have to become a client. So we responsibly teach you how to get that funding, what to do with the funding. We've had people say, well, I just want the funding and I don't want to get any coaching. Well, why would I help you get maybe $100,000 of 0% money when you go buy a car and a big screen TV and a bunch of stuff that you can't ROI? You're going to use it to actually buy assets. Now you have the best good debt ever. It's 0% for 21 months. And if you can start arbitraging, so if it costs you nothing to have the card and you're spending, and say, a $100,000 limit and you go buy real estate and you can actually turn it two or three or four times, you just printed money for free. It didn't cost you anything. Now you could go get a hard money loan, but those right now are in between 12 and 17%. So you can pay for expensive money because you don't want to be in credit card debt. So I say that because I want you to think about the, with the weird psychology. A lot of you have very odd psychology around debt and carrying debt balances. Wealthy people, we carry a lot of debt because it's good debt. And again, debt is just the cost of money. So if you're only paying small amount, zero, one, two, three, and you can make 15, 18, 20%, that's called an arbitrage. You're living on the spread. You're pretty much printing money for yourself to use or reinvest. Before I go to the common mistakes, and some of you are gonna be shocked at some of these mistakes and you've already done it to yourself. And uh, when you get in a cycle of some of these mistakes, it's pretty tough to get out. So before I go there, I want you to subscribe to my channel, click that notification button. I want you here five days a week. This is a family channel. It's here for you and your learning, not because I just need to talk onto a camera every day. I want you to really understand money and learn it. So make sure you grab our learning journal if you haven't already and start like really writing into it. So if you notice inside, we've lined it out. What was the date of the video? What was the topic? What'd you learn? What are you going to do? And then together, this is a way to bring financial literacy and business literacy into your home with you and your family. As we go to the common mistakes, the biggest one is those of you who consolidate debt and refinance your debt. It is so expensive. It drives me crazy when I see ads, you know, in between my football games on the National Debt Relief Program. And then the ad speaks for itself of how ridiculous it is. Listen to the language. <gasps> Oh, national debt relief or whatever restructuring company it is, whichever the name of the company is you're using. They helped me reduce my debt by 30 something thousand. Now I can go on a vacation. It's like, what? So you're gonna reduce your debt to go spend a bunch more money on something that's not tax deductible. The whole thing makes no sense. It's not what wealthy people do. It's not how we even think about it. We don't go on vacations, we go on business trips. We use cards extremely strategically, and especially those that actually have, you know, 4X, 6X, you know, even 8X in points, because then those points are like dollars because you can cash them in for flights, for hotels, for food, for gifts. There's just so many ways to not only use the money. And remember, when you use credit cards, not debit cards, you have 30 days days to actually pay that off. That's using the bank's money for 30 days. If you use a debit card, that money's coming right out of your bank account, right? You have zero time to use the money or actually grow, get the money back. So there's a lot of reasons why you need to use credit cards and not debit cards. My daughter uses a credit card. It's currently in my name. Very, very, very specific. She's got to actually allocate exactly what she used it for. And slowly I let her have a little more, but guess who's good, good credit? Because we have a spend pay it off. We spend, pay it off. And it helps me get more credit, but it helps her start behaving and noticing what it actually take to use a credit card instead of a debit card. The last thing on credit cards, be very, very wary of co-signing for other people. They could destroy your credit if they don't pay. So that includes you parents signing for your kids. So if you sign for your kids, because that's just the only way to help your kid get a card, I would do it. And then just like with my daughter, you keep really strict guidelines. Once a month, you sit down, you have a money meeting, you have to allocate what they're spending for. Like if my daughter wants to buy a friend you know, gifts or something like that, that's on her. She needs to make that money and pay off that part of the card. And then there's times that I'll have her pay for something and it's part of what we're gonna do as a business deduction. So it's really educational and again, Get a journal, not only for you, but for your kids and start this conversation about money. If you have any questions, go to asklaurel.com, ask a question, make a request. We're there every day. And if you join the membership of Ask Laurel, which is only $17 a month, you can come live and do a mini one-on-one, -on -one, little mini makeover with me on an Ask Laurel call. I'd love to have you out and have a conversation with you and what your questions are about money. I'll talk to you tomorrow.